just arrived in Kazakhstan. The reason why I'm in Kazakhstan right now is because I'm invited on a little girls trip with Wendy, Daphne, as well as Queenie. And we're here hosted by Visit Amalti, which is the tourism board of Amalti city right here in Kazakhstan. So over the next four and a half days, we're gonna be exploring as much as we can of this country. I have absolutely no expectations of this place. But right now though, I need to get warm because it's minus six degrees outside. Catch you on the flip side. Oh my God. Whoa! My luxurious yurt where I'm gonna stay in for a night. I have stayed in a yurt before. If you remember my trip to Mongolia, that yurt is nothing compared to this one. It even has an attached bathroom and heated floors. The last time I stayed in Mongolia, my yurt had common bathrooms and it was too cold. It was like minus six degrees. So no one actually bothered to make it out in a cold to the common bathroom to shower. And I know I sound really spoiled, but in, it's about minus 10 degrees right now. It's much appreciated. I feel so privileged. Here's the bathroom. It's really, really pretty. Heated towel racks, hot shower, very important. I'm gonna get warm and then walk down to the restaurant for my very first meal in Kazakhstan. Okay, dinner is served. What is this amazing smelling thing? So this is a Georgian hachipuri, Georgian pizza, sort of. This is like the best shit ever. Minus nine degrees Celsius, can't think of a better piece of bread to eat. This is rabbit stew. Oh my God, look at that. This is chicken liver. It smells good. Nastarovia! 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 This is the exterior of my yurt. And these are the other yurts next to me. Oh, beautiful surrounds. The ski lifts are in operation already. And this is pretty much the view from my main door. So, I'm gonna be horse riding this morning through what was once a wild apple forest. Quite excited. This is my first morning here in Kazakhstan. Just uh, 45 minutes outside Amalti in an amazing resort. I cannot pronounce the name of this resort. Here in Kazakhstan, people speak a mixture of Russian because Kazakhstan used to be part of the USSR. When the Soviet Union fell, Kazakhstan became a sovereign country. It's, I believe, the ninth largest country in the world in terms of land mass. And they speak Kazakh and Russian now. So we have arrived at the horse riding center and this is your favorite guy, Adlit. Okay, what are we doing today? Good morning. Welcome to Equestrian Center where we have beautiful horses. Today we're going to experience horseback riding. The unmistakable um, smell of the horses. Horse riding right now through the snow-capped mountains in the morning. It's amazing. What a treat. That's our leader in front. And this is the, the kind of landscape that you'll be riding through if you choose to do a horseback ride in uh, the Amalti region in Kazakhstan. So I know like horse riding can be a bit daunting because at any point you could kind of Christopher Reeves yourself and just be paralyzed from waist down. And that's like the greatest fear, right? But you know, horses are very gentle creatures. They can feel your emotions. They're very sensitive. So it's good to keep calm. And this horse riding experience is really, really safe because all the horses are linked together. I don't have any horse riding experience, but so far it's been a smooth ride. You okay, girls? Good. You know, I read that the first apples of the world, wild apples, originated from Kazakhstan before, you know, animals and human beings took apples to other parts of the world. They grew wild here. And the apples here apparently taste very different depending on what kind of flowers the bees pollinate. Some can taste sour, some can taste a bit herbal, some sweet, some a bit citrusy. Sounds all interesting to me and it's clearly not apple season right now. So this will have to do. The horses are getting a little bit slightly agitated right now, but that's only because they're going uphill carrying a human on their backs. I'll be fucking pissed if I was, you know, going uphill with no clothes on and a fucking human on my back. <laughs> so totally understand. Just arrived at base of the ski resort. We're gonna take a 25 minute cable car ride up to the top. This is the third longest cable car system in the world. This one here in Kazakhstan is about 13 kilometers long. Whatever it takes, as long as I don't have to climb up the mountain. This is the highest skating rink in the world. I read so much about it. Apparently they play cheesy Russian pop music as you go around in circles. Um, we can't wait to explore this one, I think probably tomorrow. Then our new friend slash guide, Adelaide, who's a 
Very famous with the girls on Instagram. <laughs> 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 oh handsome or not? Handsome, huh? So you must book with Avenir Tours, okay? When you come to Kazakhstan, you'll be there. I'll be your personal tour guide. Just checked in to our second home for the night. It is a ski resort, a very cozy one. Seven room boutique hotel. It has a pretty panoramic view of the ski slopes. Western toilet, stand up shower. A really nice relaxation area. You can kind of just look out to more ski slopes. Ah, oh, this is gorgeous. If it gets too hot, I could just pop the window open and just breathe in fresh mountain air. This is so lovely. I'm here at the toppest most part of the ski resort. Now, I know that Niseko and Switzerland and America, they're like very popular skiing and snowboarding places, but look beyond the cliche. Come check out Kazakhstan. It's so much cheaper here, less crowded, and the slopes are dope. I wouldn't know, because I don't ski or snowboard, but judging from the people who do, they seem to be having a great time. So Krini, Krini who's lived in Kazakhstan for about four years, and what is skiing like here? How affordable is it? It's super affordable. It ranges between $35 to $45 a day for, for a ski pass, depending if you want a half day or a full day. We get powder snow here, so it's really beautiful. It's not painful when you fall. It's very cushiony. $35 to $40 a day is super, super cheap. If you go to the popular destinations in like America, Switzerland, or even uh, Japan, a ski pass per day could cost you between $100 to like $300. So, I mean, come on guys, you do the math. It's a no-brainer. I'm here at Madeo Skating Rink. It is the highest skating rink in the world. It's located at 1,670 meters above sea level. Because it's so high up in the mountains, um, skaters actually feel lesser resistance in the air and somehow skate faster. What I love about this place is this stunning surround. So we're just surrounded by mountains. So the skating rink was built in the 1970s during the Soviet era and the architecture has pretty much remained the same. We are here at Lemon Studio. We're gonna be making our lunch. We're gonna cook traditional Kazakhstan food. And this is one of my personal requests because whenever I travel, I think the best way to get to know a people and a country is through their food. I know I say this over and over again, but I cannot stress it enough. This is the fastest way to get to know people. Mm. Super rich, this is like what we call gao. It's like almost liquid butter. So I've got some horse meat sausage. This is my first time trying it in this form. I've had sashimi before for horse, but I've never had it in sausage form. It's very tough. <laughs> Hello, horse. Okay, okay. Very, very tough. Mm. It's like pure meat. Mm. I like it. We are in the green market right now, getting a bird's eye view of all the wares that are on sale now. Fruits, nuts, medicine, meat, vegetables, flowers, dairy, you name it. Here in Kazakhstan, horse meat is a staple. So I'm here at the green market and behind me is an entire row selling horse meat. Um, I tried it myself earlier today for lunch and I gotta say though, it is amazing. And it's got like zero calories, if you can believe that. Um, sausages are being made, different cuts are being sold. Uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. If you want to get horse meat, anything, the green market is the place to be. I'm gonna try this. This is smoked horse. Mm. Oh my god. Wow. a box of persimmons and he's oh. just getting me some to try. This is one of my favorite things but it's oh. so expensive. Not too bad. I love it. Mm. Mm. So I'm inside a shop within the market that sells camel's milk and horse milk and you can totally tell which milk you're buying based on the picture on the bottle. This is mare's milk and here's some camel milk. And this is the lovely lady that owns this shop. Thank you so much. Can I see that inside? Wow. Are these pasteurized? 
Yes. Oh wow, look at that. You can buy as much as you want, okay? You can buy like the empty bottles and then get it filled up. These are the smaller ones and those are the bigger ones. <laughs> Who doesn't love cheese, right? But here in Kazakhstan, the cheeses are a bit different. They're not soft, they're actually hard little pebbles. And there's a reason for that. Nomadic tribes of Kazakhstan traverse very, very harsh terrain and they usually perspire a lot, losing a lot of body salts. So what they'll do is they'll pop one of these hard pebbly cheeses that are super, super intensely salty and suck on them as they travel so as to replenish their salt in their bodies. So all the white ones are cow milk and these are like camel milk ones. Okay, so I've just got to my room in the Ritz Carlton. Wow, it's very perfumed. Ooh, wow! Hello! Wow! <laughs> wow! Hello, balloons! Oh my god! That's me! <laughs> wow! Oh my god, it's a picture! Wow, this is so cool! What an amazing treat to come back home to a room like this after a long day of travel! The Ritz Carlton's folks, you guys really outdone yourself, man, with a welcome. Um, my bed. While it looks really nice, it's got like a terrifying amount of balloons above it. I'm low-key stressed that it would just burst. So yeah, it's um, the usual, you know, bathtub, his and her sinks. Hello. And um, nice little shower going on here. It's a nice little suite. Table. They even got a screen grab of one of my Click Network videos. <laughs> That's so cool. When you come to Kazakhstan, Big Amalti Lake is where most people will go to but somehow the roads are closed because of some sort of uh, unstable mountain rock situation. So we're here at Isik Lake which is much more local. We have the whole area to ourselves. This is frequented by the locals who come here and bring their dogs for picnic and all that. But we're here in winter and uh, apparently there's no lake now <laughs> because it's frozen. Super beautiful. It's lunchtime now and we're here at a caravan sarai and I got really excited to find it that there's actually one in Kazakhstan. When I traveled across Iran, that's all I ever ate at. It's pretty excited to check this one out. Although this is kind of built to be a restaurant, it's not really authentic, but I'm still excited to be in this space. So we're gonna head into the restaurant right now. So this is what it looks like. We have um, Kazakhstan samosas right here. Um, potato salad. It's amazing fried dough things that we're supposed to keep in, like sour cream. We have a horse meat platter, or what's left of it. This seems to be like a very popular <laughs> dish. This is lamb. And we got some biryani. And somehow the lunch group just got bigger! about to do a traditional hammam treatment here at the Ritz Carlton Spa. Um, a hammam, I would describe it to be when an adult like myself would lie on a warm marble slab as I get scrubbed and bathed from head to toe by another adult. I know this sounds really awkward and really weird, but trust me, I first did my first hammam experience in Turkey and I've been hooked ever since. And this is a luxury experience here at the Ritz Carlton of Alti that I cannot say no to. This is the marble slab that I'm going to be lying on and all the tools for an amazing bath. Wow, look at that. This is the part where I get naked, so I'll see y'all after the bath. Bye. So I just got done with my hammam. It was amazing. As you can see, my hair is all washed, my body scrubbed, lots of dirt came out and I feel amazing. And I highly recommend this if you ever come to Ritz Carlton, ask for the traditional hammam. Okay, I'm gonna pack my bags right now, head to dinner and fly home. Wow, that was like a proper time capsule, wasn't it? <laughs> Woo. So nice to see you all here again. Thanks so much for being so patient. But how's that for a major throwback to my last big trip of 2019, Kazakhstan. This is why I travel, right? So that I have things to reminisce on days when travel is not an option. Days like the ones we have now. I remember Kazakhstan like it was yesterday. Okay? I remember it being very, very, very cold. Very, very picturesque. Just snow covered everywhere. They love horse a lot. I mean, I rode a horse through wild apple orchards and then I ate a lot of horse meat. <laughs> like a lot in all forms. 
I also walked through the valley of a very stunning canyon that pretty much rivals their more famous cousins in other parts of the world. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of what Kazakhstan has to offer as a travel destination. This time I didn't travel solo, I went with friends and surprisingly we got along really well despite not knowing half the group. These girls were amazing and we had such a ball. I hope you enjoyed this little travel time capsule video as much as I've enjoyed putting it together with my producer Vera. Um, unfortunately life happened so this took a little bit longer than expected but better late than never right? What I'm hoping this pandemic will bring about is a deeper and more purposeful way of traveling and experiencing the world we live in. I mean, there's nothing like a world disaster to make us sit up and take stock of what's most important to us in our lives. I hope that the new travel trend will be that instead of rushing through and traveling 10 cities in a span of like two weeks, people would pick one community and stay there for weeks, maybe even months, and contribute to the community and live that experience. Of course, what's in the works for me is I'm gonna up and go away for six months next year in 2022. I shan't tell you where, but it's one of my spirit countries. Till then, please don't forget to subscribe to Click Network. Um, the engine is still running. Follow me on Instagram, hey Roz, if you wanna check out what I've been doing in this closed up, locked up pandemic world. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the flip side.